Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. We want to ask you, what do you wish you'd have said? What do you wish you'd have said in relation to the March primaries that you didn't get to say on last week's show? John Hood, we'll start with you. Tom, there are dozens of legislative primaries, and we couldn't get to all of them in our uh, broadcast, so I want to mention two more that are open seats. Republican incumbents are leaving their seats and their competitive primaries. One of them is House District 81. That's in the Piedmont area, centered in Davidson County. Rain Brown is leaving. Larry Potts, who's a Davidson County commissioner, is on the ballot. So is Sharon Pierce, a nurse. Tyler Forrest, who is a Salisbury fire captain. And I think the county commissioner might have an edge there in Davidson County, but we'll see. And then a House District 120, that's all the way in the western part of the state, Roger West. He's stepping down. There are two Republican candidates, Kevin Corbin from Franklin, Elliot Southworth from Murphy, uh, fighting for that uh, Republican-leaning seat. Becky, what do you think you, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, we talked and alluded to the fact of fractured caucuses for both the Republicans and Democrats. And one thing that surprised me at the end of filing were there were not a lot of primary incumbents. You know, we heard through the session somebody would get in a tiff with one of the others and, you know, they were going to get primary and they were going to recruit. And we heard these rumors of, you know, people recruiting candidates to run against somebody they liked or didn't like and those kind of things. And at the end of the day, we just didn't didn't see much of it, which I think is an indication that when these ca these campaigns are underway, particularly as we move towards November, the parties are going to come together, they're going to be united, and they're going to be fighting for their team. Brad? Well, I want to expand back on the vote. You know, this is the first time since 1976 that we've had a primary in March. And the Democrats in 76 moved the primary in March because they wanted to play with Jimmy Carter as a Southern favorite son of the South. Yet that summer, we moved our state primary from May until August, and the turnout was abysmal in August, so we learned a lesson there. It's going to be interesting to see with the state primary and the federal primary together, I think you're going to have escalated turnout. On the show, I said... Did I hear you say 50%? 50%. In the past, our presidential year turnouts have averaged between... 35 and 40, 41, 42 percent on the high end. I think the 2008 uh, presidential primary was right at about 40 percent. So uh, I think we're going to see a whole lot of turnout, and the turnout's going to come from the conservative, the ultra conservative, the Tea Party, the Cruz folks, the, the Trump folks, and then you're going to see Hillary's folks. And to a great extent, I think you're going to see a lot of energy around Bernie Sanders. And I think Sanders probably sticks in the race until. Our primary. Yeah, Chris? two quick things. One is, and John alluded to it during the show, but I think maybe this year more than ever before, depending on how Trump and Cruz do in North Carolina or if they're how how they're doing, uh, the presidential race might have a bigger effect on the primary. Some of these primaries, and we've seen it in a long time. And it's in, uh, to and then to play on what Becky said, it's interesting. There weren't a lot of primary challenges, but that doesn't mean the House uh, caucus is unified. Just a, a couple weeks ago, we saw the House Majority Leader openly fighting with the House Rules Chairman about who said what about whom to what reporter. Uh, so the animosity inside the House caucus is is worse than ever. But it hasn't shown up on how people on people filing for office. That'll be something that's taken up after the yeah, election. Yeah, that was a comment that Becky made. Does anybody <laughs> believe these primary elections won't be loud, angry? divisive uh, and flooded with negative campaign ads? Well, I certainly hope that's what they're like. <laughs> that'll, that'll be great for NC Spin, which is ultimately really what we care about. We'll have, we'll have something to talk about. Uh, another uh, quick phenomenon on this was that uh, for months we've been saying that the TV air airways were going to begin in January and we're just going to absolutely be flooded. Uh, we're now beginning to find out that the candidates are just now beginning to place buys uh, middle of January. That doesn't give them much time to, to be able to stage no, campaigns. And listen, you know, from a strategic standpoint, the campaigns that I'm working on, we're not placing buys until the first week of February. So we're looking at a six-week flight for paid advertising time. Is social media taking it over? Really is. is it digital, playing a much larger media, piece? Digital media in particular and the ability to match your voter file to an IP address to a physical address, that's where you're seeing a lot of presidential. You're going to see state going that way too. Interesting. Well, thanks for watching the Afterspin. We'll have more video all during the week on mcspin.com.